Hello and welcome to the Adafruit Circuit Python Weekly for February 4th, 2019. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work full time on Circuit Python. Uh, we run this meeting every week uh, as a chance for all folks who are interested in Circuit Python to get um, together and chat about. Uh, oh, Katney, can you mute? I can hear you typing. Oh, uh, good. You what? Type, type. That's really weird. Type. I'm hard. I'm hardware muted, and it's not working. Sorry. You might have the wrong input on Discord then. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah. So we we have this meeting at Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern here on our Discord channel. Uh, to join our Discord channel, you can go to the URL adafru.it/discord. That will redirect you to our Discord invite link. Uh, you can hop in there. We're in the text channel pretty much all week. Uh, so whenever you hear this, drop by and say hi. Um, and then we're in the voice channel during the meeting at Mondays at 11. Uh, this meeting is uh, open to everybody. So if you have anybody uh, or know anybody that should be in here who should uh, has projects to tell us about, let us know. Um, this meeting is recorded, so I'm recording the Discord screen, and I'm also recording uh, the audio, so beware uh, that that is happening. Uh, the recordings are going up on YouTube, uh, on the Adafruit YouTube, youtube.com slash Adafruit. I put uh, some of them on Diode Zone as well, uh, if you're looking for an alternative to YouTube, and uh, pretty soon we'll have a podcast feed in your podcast uh, program of choice. Uh, if we're not on there, let us know uh, in the next couple of weeks, which will be exciting. That will be audio only. Um, this meeting is run in four parts. We start with the state of circuit Python, which is kind of a statistics overview of the health of the project. Uh, follow that with hug reports, which we do as a round robin, as a uh, <laughs> um, uh, I will start, and then we'll go down the list uh, and around for the folks who are in the voice chat. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to say thank you to the folks who have been doing awesome work since you last had the chance to thank somebody. Uh, after that, we'll do another round robin of status updates, which is a quick couple minutes about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week or, or future in general. Uh, and then lastly, we have the section which we've called In the Weeds, which is our chance to discuss any sort of uh, topic more in depth. Um, and the way that that works is it's... Uh, we just go, uh, if you have a topic you'd like to, to cover in that section, you just drop it in the text chat, we'll snag it into the notes, and then we'll go through the list of the things that we snagged during the meeting uh, one by one. Um, so for the, those with the recording, I take time codes uh, so you can skim through the notes if you don't want to listen to the whole meeting. So let me take a time code and I'll jump into the state of CircuitPython. Um, overall, we've had... Uh, 27 pull requests merged. I pulled these numbers from the Adabot run last night. Uh, we had 11 different authors uh, with Tim Jackins and um, yeah, Tim Jackins being the, the very new name that I see on that list of 11 authors. We also had eight reviewers, which I think is more than we normally do. So thank you to all those reviewers. Really appreciate it. Reviewing is actually a great way to get started uh, into CircuitPython contribution. So uh, if you want to check out some new code and see if it works and make sure that it looks good to you, um, we're always looking for more reviewers. Um, Issues-wise, we had 16 closed issues by 10 people and 13 open by 11 people. So we're uh, net down three issues, which is great. Um, we kind of just want to make sure at least to not have more and more issues crop up on us. So that's good that that number is going down. And then overall, I would say that um, we're very much in the middle of the beta four phase, which is us kind of finishing all of the, the extra features that we want to do and then starting to, to get all of the bugs handled in 4.0. So uh, we're working towards the release candidate phase, which is the, the point where we don't know of any open bugs that we would consider bad enough to not make it stable. And then uh, once we fix all those bugs that we are concerned with, we'll call it a release candidate. And then we basically, it's, it's a candidate to be a stable release. 
and uh, if we find any bugs during that phase, then we'll fix those. And we basically leave it for like a week. And if nobody finds any issues, we'll we'll call it stable, and we'll have 4.0 out the door. So um, that's where we're at, uh, kind of overall. Um, so let's go on to the core. So these numbers are only for the Adafruit Circuit Python repository. Um, we've had eight pull requests merged in the last week from four different authors and two reviewers. We have six open pull requests. So again, if people want to help out, uh, take a look at those. Although I do know that those are pretty old, so um, keep your eye out for some new fresh ones that might be easier to review. Um, and we had 10 closed issues by five people and two opened by two people. So we're net down issues, which is great. Uh, for a total of 152 open issues. Um, you can check out check the notes for the link to all of those issues. Download stats, our latest unstable release is 4.0 beta 1. We've had 220 total downloads, and the breakdown by board and by language is available in the notes doc. Um, I won't go over those here. Uh, there are a number of new uh, a number of new boards there which are exciting. Um, and for download stats for 3.1.2, which is our latest stable release, we have 3,742 total downloads. Um, I'm not actually sure uh, how much that's gone up since the last stable release, but um, pretty solid. Uh, it, the The takeaway that I've that I take away with uh, reading these things is uh, how many more downloads our stable releases get over our unstable ones. So, if you are only using stable and you're on this call, please. Uh, give the betas a try. Let us know uh, how things are going with that um, because soon enough it will be our stable release and all of these people will download that. So um, with that, let's go on to Katni. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about the libraries. This week we had 19 pull requests merged, which is amazing. I want to uh, call out a couple names that are new. Uh, Tim Jackins, uh, Tasm Devil. Um, those are names I don't recall seeing. Uh, so thank you to new authors. And uh, we had seven reviewers, which is amazing. Um, and I want to call out Maker Melissa for her first uh, code review. Mm -hmm. So that's excellent. Um, we have 14 open pull requests, which is definitely up, which means we've got some nice new ones. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, get started in reviewing, feel free to take a look at those in the notes. Um, we also have a library issue on the um, CircuitPython repo. It's, it's pinned, so it's at the top. And it is updated weekly with um, all the information about the library. So the pull request list will be there. We had six issues closed by five people and 11 open by nine people. So we are up this week uh, with 71 open issues at the moment. Um, this is also good, though, because uh, a lot of the issues I've seen pop up are new stuff that people are finding because they're testing our library. So um, I'm happy to have an increase um, because of the fact that we have had some amazing people going through a lot of these issues and taking care of them. So we are... Um, definitely getting into a, a good cycle here. Uh, so other than that, the rest of the notes are uh, usually repo specific issues. Um, things that if you want to get started in contributing to CircuitPython, uh, those are uh, a good place to look because some of those are, are real simple fixes. Um, maybe adding something to a file uh, or something to that effect. Um, and if you uh, want to take a look at those and help out, that would be amazing. You can feel free to ping us in the CircuitPython Discord chat if you have any questions about how to get started with any of that, because uh, Git and GitHub can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, but we are here to help you through figuring that out. Uh, so take a look at all that stuff um, and feel free to help us out if that's something you're interested in doing. And that is the libraries. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Okay, let's go on to hug reports. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, welcome Troy Gar. Uh, I know this is your first meeting. I also realize you're lurking, but uh, just to lay it out, uh, hug reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks for the work that they've been doing. Um, we do this as a round robin, so I will start and go down the list. 
I will skip people who are have told us they are lurking, and I will read off anybody who is text only. Uh, I will also read off anybody who was unable to make the meeting but gave us hug reports uh, and status updates later, um, kind of in alphabetical order, since that's the way the hug reports or the circuit... <laughs> The circuit by the voice channel is organized alphabetically, so uh, that's the way we do it. Okay, and with that, I'll uh, start. I wanted to give a hug report first and foremost to Katni uh, for her ever-expanding skill set. Uh, congrats on the first PCB design, which is amazing. Um, did a sensor breakout, which is really epic. Um, thank you to Maker Melissa for all of the library help, um, reviews, changes, fixes, pull requests, all very amazing. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Tasm Devil also for for German translation contributions specifically, but also uh, general help on libraries and issues and stuff. So uh, thank you to those, th those three folks. Uh, let's go on to TG Techie. Sorry, I had to, sorry, I had to find the right window. No worries. Um, <laughs> A uh, general hug to the community as well, and a specific hug to Katni for the awesome library work she always does, and a hug to Maker Melissa. I, uh, I she did a little while ago, but I'm looking forward to using her uh, nippy display hard work sort of driver. Hmm. That's all. Awesome. Thank you, TG Techie. All right, Troygar is lurking. Let me go through the list, I think. Uh, okay, I'll read Brent's off, who was any, unable to make it. So um, let me take a time code. Uh, Brent says, uh, at Alex Corvus for noticing issues with the CircuitPython LoRa gateway guide and helping me fix it. Uh, thanks to Tan Newt, myself, for the stream on Friday. Really interesting to watch watch uh especially enjoyed watching debugging using the heap visualization all right so that's those are brent's updates carter and seed grover are lurking so we'll go to charles i'm not lurking oh somebody said you're lurking no not this week sorry all right go ahead um group hug as usual and uh one one another one also for maker melissa for helping out in the libraries i came across something with auto show in the he 16k 33 stuff in the forums and kind of made an issue for myself to fix mm -hmm. but it got fixed for me which <laughs> is pretty cool so that's awesome i love it Good when job. that happens yeah so thanks to that and yeah one another one of you scott for doing that live stream that stuff is more cool than you think it is to do so <laughs> all right i, I well. suggest doing more of that in the future all right i i did enjoy it it was good um and for those of you who missed it i did just post the videos so you can check that out as well and that's it for hugs thanks carter all right seagrover is lurking and charles is not well it looks uh i give a, a group hug to everybody again i know i keep doing that but it's really great to see this whole thing going on um also um uh tanu i uh, give one to uh, give one to tanu because uh your your usb midi is working you know your port in and port out stuff is working really good awesome thank you great yeah. thanks charles okay uh before we get to jerry uh, i'm gonna read off dan's who's out uh dan says uh tan newt for the amazing display work uh katney for big help with library setup and reviews uh, jerry n for ble testing and trying the canned examples and then lastly uh, mike b lady ada and katney for guide review and help all right so that's from dan uh dave estelles is lurking so we're gonna go to jerry um, yeah, well, shout out to Dan for the continued uh, work on the BLE stuff. It's it's really growing fast and uh, and lots of fun. And and to you, Scott, for uh, the same with the with the display I/O. Lots of, lots of it's uh, fun to be able to try it out and see see what's going on. And for responding to questions uh, and helping me understand what what it is it it does. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, to Tasm Devil, it was nice. Um, he jumped in and did a PR on something that I was uh, had actually come across as well, and but he did it better than I did. 
So, but nice to see that, <laughs> and uh, nice to see it, see the, the see the help with the with those libraries from him. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, thanks, Jerry. All right, Katni. Thank you. Um, so first and foremost, uh, I want to give a hug to maker Melissa for all the amazing work uh, on the libraries. She's been writing, reviewing, updating, releasing everything. Uh, I uh, usually have <clears throat> a lot of stuff to come in and do, um, and I'm just getting emails that all of it's done. So mm -hmm. that's been amazing. Um, and congratulations and thank you for your first code review. Uh, it is a super crucial part of the whole system, and um, I'm really excited that you have uh, gotten started with that. A uh, hug to Dan H. for helping me with the getting started with BLE on CircuitPython guide and for writing and updating the Bluefruit Connect library. Hug to uh, K-Town for taking a half hour while apparently dead sick to discuss BLE. Um, I didn't know he was sick, uh, mm -hmm. and I really hope he's feeling better. Um, hug to Lady Ada for guiding me through learning a lot of new things. Uh, to Roy for fancying up some code that I, uh, I'm using for a project that I'm working on. To Mike B for proofing a blog post for me. There's a bunch of tweaky WordPress stuff that I have very little knowledge of, but Mike is a blog wizard and got all of that set up for me, so thank you. And to Brian, who is not a cat, uh, for helping me with some datasheet basics. Do you have friends named Brian who are a cat? No, um, I I was talking with Lady Ada about uh, writing drivers and um, Brian happened to be here. He knows a lot about data sheets. He started explaining it, not realizing that she was going to quiz me. Um, she asked how I knew the answer I gave. I said, I'm not gonna lie, I have help. And she said, wait, is the cat helping you? <laughs> and I said, yes. So uh, fessing up, uh, Brian is not in fact a cat. <laughs> Awesome. So that's where that came from. <laughs> well, now we know Brian's not a cat. The ca exactly. That's the important part. You might say the cat's out of the bag. It is so out of the bag. It's true. <laughs> All right. That's what I got. All right. Thanks, Katni. OK, Maker Melissa. Hi. Um, I w first of all, I wanted to give a hug report to Mike Burrell. I'm not sure if it's Barella or Barilla or how it's pronounced. but. Um, I wanted to give him a hug report for helping me get set up on Learn to um, start writing a new guide um, for the RA8875. And then a hug report to Katni for um, designing her first deco board. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Melissa. OK, Mike and SDW are lurking. Um, so Summersoft has it written in. Did Sedacious post? He said he was going to, but I don't see it in the notes. Okay. He must have put him in the wrong doc. We'll get him next week. Okay. Uh, I'll read Summersoft's after I take a time code. Summersoft says, uh, hug report to Sag Attack for some good discussion on frequency capture and providing some alternative frequency generating firmware for testing. Uh, thank you to Tan Newt for the debugging with Tan Newt live stream. Uh, awesome look at your process and how analyzing the heap can help the debug process. Thank you to Katni for diving into datasheet land and designing fritzing parts and her first breakout board in Eagle. Bravo. Uh, thank you to Jerry N for continuing to be the break things and replication wizard. It truly is a service to the community. Uh, and lastly, a uh, couple days late, but I'd like to spring a group hug for group hug day. Um, a Groundhog Day, maybe? Group Hug Day? We'll, we'll rename it. Uh, Shadow or not, you are all awesome. All right. And with that, that is our Hug Reports. Um, if anybody comes in later, has some later, you can always do them later because we, we always have time for hugs. Um, let's move on to status updates. Uh, so status updates are done in the same uh, format as a round robin. Uh, again, I will start, um, and this is a, ch a quick chance for you to talk about what you're working on and what you what you worked on in the last week and what you plan on doing in the coming week. It's a great way to just make sure everybody's on the same page and uh, discuss any overlapping things that may happen or that, that might be useful. So uh, let's get started with that. 
I will take another time code. Um, first and foremost, I checked in a big change that replaced Sprite with Tile Grid um, because Tile Grid, a, a Sprite is really just a one by one Tile Grid. So uh, to save space, I deleted Sprite and put Tile Grid in its place. Uh, along with that, I enabled a terminal. Um, so if you've initialized the display in CircuitPython and are no longer using it, you'll get actually your, your serial output to the display, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, I, because that uh, needs to ma manage the backlight for the display, I also added backlight support to the display object itself. So if you were doing PWM on your own, now you'll want to just do uh, pass the PWM pin in and you can do display.brightness, I believe. And that takes a float. Um, after that, I changed the way rotation works to align it to the screen refresh. Uh, I realized that uh, when you ref when the screen refreshes itself, it always goes in a particular direction. And I wanted to make sure that we were actually pushing pixels to the display in that order. Uh, one consequence that I may take a look at this week is that on disk bitmap, when the screen is 90 degrees off of the rotation of the bitmap, it's much slower, so I'm aware of that, and I have some fixes coming um, for that. I On Friday, I fixed a couple memory issues on a live stream on my Twitch channel. I just uploaded the uh, recording of that to both YouTube and Diozone. So uh, if you're interested, um, there the links are in the notes. Um, and if you're in the chat right now and want to wanna get a... I, I put them in the... CircuitPython text channel earlier, but if you want another copy, just let me know. I'll copy them over. Um, I do like doing that from time to time, but I don't want to commit to doing it uh, consistently because you know, never know what my my schedule will be. Um, this week, I well, I this weekend I did some speed ups to file reads with FatFS, uh, fast seek, which basically means when it's seeking around a file, it doesn't have to look up in the fat where where to go, which which sped up the on disk bitmap stuff, uh, not perfectly so, but made it made a pretty big difference. Um, I'm going to go over the outstanding 4.0 bugs uh, early this week because I really want to figure out how to get us to the release candidate phase. So you'll see a lot of uh, issue stuff going into the text channel and emails if you're subscribed as well. Um, and then after I kind of do that grooming of issues, I may do performance work for Display.io uh, later in the week because it is uh, pretty slow at this point, which has been intentional, but um, speeding it up would be great too. So um, I think that's it for me. Uh, let's go on to TG Techie. Hi. So uh, I've been... Uh, working on rewriting my groove from scratch, make it cleaner. Um, and well, I didn't finish in the week goal that I set because it turns out, by no surprise to me, college is more important than coding. <laughs> um, but I had the object abstraction done in two days and um, was hung up on a memory bug for a good three days. Turns out I uh, input numbers into a function wrong. Mm -hmm. which is a wonderful bug to have yeah. over something else. And um, it's down from like 80 kilobytes to 30 kilobytes. Nice. Um, yeah. I will continue working on it. And it's all GitHub. I'd love some input when I'm done. Middle. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Keep up the good work. Thank you. You too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Troygar is lurking, so we'll go wrap around to the top of the list. Uh, before Carter goes, I'm going to get Brent, who gave us notes. Um, Brent says, finish up the CircuitPython Laura to Adafruit IO guide. Uh, might be live this week. Uh, nothing CircuitPython planned for this week, working on some automation things. And that's for Brent. Let's go on to Carter. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the auto show, as mentioned, ended up just being a PR review. So that was easy peasy. <laughs> uh, then I did a little more work on porting a, um, a dual stepper motor example from 
old Raspberry Pi Python land to Blinka land mm -hmm. to go along with MotorKit also, mm -hmm. Katniss MotorKit. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty straightforward. And then there was a request for writing an example that shows how to use gain with the ADCs, the ADS 1X 15s, mm -hmm. the 12 bit and 16 bit, I believe, ADCs, can't remember. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just cobble together a quick little example to show what gain does and probably be a bit of a uh, learn guide update to go along with that kind of complement it. Cool. But that was it. Awesome. Thank you, Carter. All right. Uh, let's go to Charles. I've been playing with a, a MIDI USB. It, it seems to work pretty, uh, pretty good, but I, that's been on the ASW uh, version of the uh, Metro M0. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to try it with four. I'm going to try four. Uh, I was just told that it might uh, that it should be in 4.0. So I'm going to try to uh, try it on an actual version of uh, 4.0 beta, mm -hmm. and then we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Charles. Okay, uh, let's go to Dan's notes. Uh, he did a learn guide for the Circus Python BLE demo that was on Show and & Tell, and then also did some improvements to the BLE libraries and examples. And I forgot to take a time code, so we'll just say it's that. All right, uh, Dave is lurking, so we'll go on to Jerry. Um, yeah, I spent a bunch of time playing with the, the Blueprint Connect um, library and with the, the, uh, the, the apps to, to control things. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and working working really well. Um, Dan's done some really nice improvements to that, um, especially with the with the cricket and the feather in our fifty two a forty. It's a really nice nice package. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, one of the things I, I played last week with uh, with hooking up a little ro ro four servo robotic arm to it, and that, that it's worked really well. And then now I'm trying to um, set it up so that I can use the iPhone's uh, sensors, the accelerometer and stuff like that, for controlling a pan tilt. Hmm. Um, that's it's it's nice and really easy to do with, with the stuff Dan's provided. Um, and then uh, yeah, the display I always been was was actually was fun to play with too. Um, finally, you know, actually getting some use out of the, the 2.4 inch TFT on these with uh with things now and um, and uh, you know thanks to your pointers for trying to just realize how things work. I've I've really been out of the loop on how the display stuff even even functions and mm -hmm. what the various pieces mean. So um major victory and actually being able to write some text to the screen to the 2.4 inch tft that worked really nicely great oh yeah i do want to uh the display text um library uh you made updates to the actual driver but the the um the examples are, are quite out of date now because they still make some some failed calls to um sprites and things like that that need to be changed right right to, uh, yeah just a heads up on that i don't know if you want PRs to that now or if, if i assume you'll be making substantial changes to it so it may not be worth no i think i i think display text yeah I, i've been meaning to go just replace the sprite call with tile grid i just forgot yeah that that is that all that, that i assume that's all that needs to be done that, that, that seemed to work so. that's all i know of yeah but tile wow. grid's designed so that you can literally just rename sprite to tile grid and it works it just defaults yeah, to yeah. one by one yeah, that, yeah it worked fine that's all, that's all i did so. yeah um, and then let's see, where am I? Um, oh yeah. And also, uh, I finally pulled out, I've had one of the, uh, the PN532 NFC readers for a while and finally got that up, up and running. I found some, some little issues with that, um, with some, what's in the examples and fix those and put some, a PR in, uh, and that's, that's been, been fun to play with too, is now I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it. <laughs> and then, uh, this week, um, it's going to plan to spend a lot more time playing with the blue fruit um connect app um i'm trying i i can build the, the ios app on on my mac but i i can't get it to compile i'd like to be able to run the that that app on the on the mac natively hmm. but i can't get the app to build so hmm. trying to figure out i think it's just the swift you know has has evolved some since it was released and uh just right. need to do some figure things out but that's that's a a major headache yeah but, uh, if you do need help on that, I would suggest filing an issue on the Blue Fruit repo because okay. the person, like, I think that's the best way to get a hold of the person who's, who worked on it. Yeah, he just, there was just some questions about that and pretty much his suggestion was, yeah, it is what it is and <laughs> have right. fun with it. 
Right. So, uh, but that's that's fine. I'll, I'll I'll try and if I if I if I can make some improvements to it, I will certainly post them there. Yeah, and if you uh, if you really have questions, just let me know, and I'll I'll back channel it to them as well. Okay, it's 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 not a big deal at this point. The app is working great, the iOS app. So. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, so just uh, more of the same. I keep trying to break things. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jerry. All right, Katney. Hello. So uh, last week, I routed my first board in Eagle. Uh, it started as an assignment to design the sensor part and turned into completing the entire board. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, had, as always, Library Monday, um, and I put a link in the notes to the CircuitPython library's tracking issue. Uh, I started a getting started guide with um, uh, for CircuitPython and the NRF52840. We're doing a, a quick um, quick start, sort of like uh, here's some real simple demos to show how to use things um, so that people can build on those um, and know how to get started with, with CircuitPython um, and Bluetooth. I uh, received a lesson on the basics of driver writing, um, and I worked on updating and documenting my tabletop lightbox photo studio build. Um, I eventually want to be able to do a guide for it. I did not document it when I built it. So shaking a fist at past me um, <laughs> and going through and mocking up um, how to do uh, parts of it so that I can at least kind of show how it was built. Um, and then I worked on uh, the code for that as well over the weekend. Um, so this week, I will be doing a fritzing object for the ADXL 343. I'm going to be updating the e ink guide to include the latest display. Um, I'm porting two motor kit demos from the Motor Python library to CircuitPython. Uh, I will be writing the driver for the board I designed, the VCNL4040. The PCBs are in. Um, so once those are assembled, they will be sent to me, and I will be getting started on that. Uh, later this week, more fritzing objects and very low priority, which will probably be on the list for a few weeks, uh, is update the CPX lib to remove the 2x backwards compatibility. Um, so whatever I have, just rando time in the next you know, a few weeks that may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. And that is what's going on with me. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Maker Melissa. Hi. Okay. Um, so last week I finished the dot star feather wing library and I did my first code review. Yay. And this next coming week, I'm planning on, on doing the NeoPixel feather wing and the seven segment one, which I think both of those are going to be easy because they'll use a lot of my previous work. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to do the RTC feather wing, and I'm going to start writing the RA8875 guide mm -hmm. for the loan. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Let's, let's see. Mike is lurking. SDW is lurking. So, ah, here's a note from Sedacious. I will read that before reading off Summersoft. Um, Sedacious just says, uh, last week got my guide into moderation and the new CP32 M4 Warover board mostly routed. Um, this week, a new board off to the fab, getting display IO on older boards and a few miscellaneous Eagle projects. So that's Sedacious uh, is update, and I'll read Summersoft. Summersoft says, uh, last week uh, for Adabot, mitigated a couple intermit intermittent Travis Cron failures with the library report, uh, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see if they pop back up this week, and I just realized I didn't gracefully handle one, but may provide insight to the root cause. Uh, last week for frequency in changed the polling period to 10 milliseconds which greatly stabilized the event counts having uh thought about making this user configurable now steadily capturing up to two megahertz with no ill effects on the vm which is very impressive uh, frequency calculation is a little low two kilohertz reads as 1.8 kilohertz uh, 4k is 3.4 kilohertz so and so on I believe this is due to my poor mathing and attempts at adjusting for EIC latency, which is also really interesting. 
um, this week, uh, frequency in, uh, Adabot, work on the new line issue for Google Docs transcription, and uh, maybe CircuitPython build tools for Adafruit frame buff inclusion of default font.bin, which has a f an issue in the notes as well in terms of that. So uh, that is status updates. Um, we've looped all the way around and we haven't had anybody new come in. So uh, thank you to everybody for their status updates. Uh, let's move on to In the Weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is a chance for us to just talk about anything, really. Um, it's towards the end. The idea is that we can take as much time as we want uh, to talk about different things. Um, if you have topics that you want to talk about, uh, dump, uh, post them in the text chat, uh, the CircuitPython channel, and we'll pick those up, um, and then we'll cover them. So we'll start with uh, Summer Sauce, who's been text only today, so I will read it off. Um, Summersoft asks, uh, what is the future of Adafruit frame buff? Uh, will it be used with Display.io or is it merely a support bridge until Display.io is fully implemented and then used only with the Raspberry Pi? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't see... Um, I don't see frame buff going away because people are using it and it's not built in. So it's kind of slow, but, um, yeah. Oh, Katni says he's asking in the context of including the font eight by five bin in the bundle. Um, I think for the, yeah, I think it's good to do that because the support for non 16 bit displays is going to come later into display IO. So I, I think supporting frame buff would be good. Um, so that would be good. I think um, eventually we will want to replace it with like a Python implementation of display IO for Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, but we need to let display IO kind of mature and stabilize before we get to that point. Um, frame buff was kind of a like, oh, it already exists. Let's just quickly get this out there and get it working sort of thing. So um, I don't think, I wouldn't expect us to build frame buff on top of display IO because they're very different models for doing similar sorts of things. Um, but I don't think that frame buff will be around or will be going away soon. Um, but the hope is that display IO will, will show its promise soon and people will start using it. Which will be good. Okay. All right. And then let me check another time code. Uh, so the other thing is that Charles asking about what about the wrapper for mini messages? And I think that um, it's. Well, I sort of got a hint that maybe Lady Ada was working on something like that. Because it's not, I'm not having trouble, uh, you know, sending out messages. What I'm, you know, what I'm having grief with is, uh, you know, and I don't want to have to write, continually write, is how to decide, okay, a message comes in, mm -hmm. and has a port, it has a, uh, a well, not a port, the, what's the word for it? Uh, you know, it's, it can come on in different chat. It might come in on, say, channel one. Right. Your device may be only looking for messages on channel on channel two. Right. Ex and the only exception to that is if there's Omni on, if your device has that kind of feature. Omni you know, on. What do you mean by that? Uh, in other words, what it means, it what it basically means is that you can. When you receive messages, mm -hmm. then it will respond. It'll either respond to channel specifically, channel specifically, um, or it will it will respond on all for all channels. Right. That's that's what the that's the that's the only message I'm wondering whether I, I'm beginning to think it's not necessary to. 
Yeah, I yeah. I I mean I'm not a MIDI expert by any means. I know that um the place that Lady It has been working on it is in this Adafruit CircuitPython MIDI repo. Um, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have what you're talking about. It it's mostly sending, it's less receiving at this point. Um yeah. And there's nothing up uh, nothing for uh, nothing for uh receiving messages. It's just right. sending I know we okay. we did briefly talk about doing a similar model to what Dan had done, where if you want to be able to receive a particular type of message, you would basically import that type of message, and then it registers with the thing that does the parsing. Um, that makes sense, you know, because sometimes you don't need to. You may only need to receive um, notes on and note off. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so I think that was the plan. It just hasn't been done yet. Um, I know Lady Ada has been super busy, so uh, if yeah, you do yeah. want to take a stab of it. And, yeah, and now I know where to look for it. There we go. Yeah, and that that would be the place if you want to add stuff, uh, do a pull request, um, and, and she'll see it and we'll see it. Again, as always, if anybody has trouble with Git or anything, just let us know and we're happy to help. It's like it's like when you create a synthesizer using uh, using uh, uh, a uh, trellis. Mm-hmm. You might want to, you want to receive you might want to receive messages into the into the sound part of it. Right, right. It's, right now, I'm sort of doing it in a very primitive method, primitive way, and it's it it works. Uh, and plus, the fact that there's a fairly a complete uh, out, outgoing message implementation that I sort of uh, uh, borrowed from uh, uh, modern devices, mm-hmm. modern device. They had a very nice library for their Fluxima synth. Mm-hmm. That sort of played around with converting that to uh, Python. Right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah so we'll yeah. De- we definitely take That's all the mechanisms. Nice. Yeah. Um, so that's the status of, of the MIDI work that Lady It has been doing. Um, okay, yeah, she, it's it's going slow only because she does she doesn't put a huge amount of time into it. I understand that. Yeah. She's got something else. Oh yeah, she's doing all sorts of things. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 She's got lots on her plate. So uh, any help with that is always well is always welcome. So. Um, yeah. That's the that's the status of it. Um, okay. Thanks, Charles. Uh, the ASW version of uh, port in and port out worked very well for me. What do you mean ASW? <laughs> you know, you you gave you connected me to to a temporary lo- ah okay. You know, to the uh, to the uh, to uh, to that right. You no, know, because it had you hadn't put it into uh, into the. Uh, into the uh, GitHub yet, right? Right, right. And that's what I've been playing with. But uh, now I now I know I can try the four uh, O beta. Yep. Try it on four O beta. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. That solves that problem. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other in the weed stuff, so I think we'll just wrap up. Um, let me take a time code for wrap up. Um, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for February fourth, twenty nineteen. Um, we are here every week um, on uh, the Adafruit Discord, which is uh, adafru.it/discord. That's how you can get there. Uh, everybody is welcome to join, uh, listen in, uh, and lurk if you like, or chat and tell us what projects you're working on. Uh, happy to hear about all of it. Um, the meeting happens normally on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern uh, on the Discord channel. Uh, w- most of us are U.S. based, so if there is a U.S. holiday, we will change the date and we will post about it in the Circuit Python text channel on Discord. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, this meeting is recording, recorded and posted on the Adafruit YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com slash adafruit along with links to notes um, which have time codes so if you don't want to listen to the whole thing you can always uh, skim the notes and then seek in the video to what is interesting 
Um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you everybody who's made it to the meeting today. And those of you who are listening after the fact and managed to listen to the end, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk with you all next week. Thanks everyone.